Hey everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here at Chaykin Analytics. Thanks for joining me. I'm the Chief Market Strategist, and this is our halftime show each and every week here on Stock Charts TV. We go over just a few things, what's happening out there in the markets, um, you know, kind of what we're seeing in, from the sector rotation and uh, just in general, uh, just some news highlights, um, you know, of the day and kind of looking at what really is happening out there in the markets. And, you know, right now we're green across the screen here. So, um, it's nice to see. Obviously, we were up about, uh, you know, almost 1% on the Dow, about a half a percent on the S&P, about a quarter percent on the NASDAQ. It's kind of getting lower and lower right between all three of those indexes. Um, and rounding out is the Russell 2000, our small cap uh, index that we track here. Uh, that's up uh, about 0.8%, just shy of 1% there. And uh, you're seeing the VIX elevated slightly up about 7% today, over 24. And again, not a you know, massive problem there, but you know, you just start to see these things increase and you pay attention. So that's kind of what we do. Um, in general, kind of looking at uh, what consumers are talking about this week, the New York Fed came out with a survey and it says consumers are seeing inflation easing uh, into next year. Then that's pretty incredible. And maybe that's where we're getting all this uh, year end spending and you're seeing a lot of retail stocks break out and things of that nature. Um, but we just got to be careful. We got the CPI coming out tomorrow and I think that's going to be. Um, interesting. You're looking at estimates of uh, an increase, uh, a 7.3% annual rise. Um, and that would have shown maybe a, about a 0.2% monthly increase. Um, and that's just an economist being surveyed there. Now, you know, the previous uh, release was better than expected. Uh, that was 7.7. .7. So year over, or, I'm sorry, month over month, we're seeing a slightly decrease. And I think, look, the market's going to latch on to any good news. We just saw that uh, even when uh, Powell spoke uh, not too long ago, um, just a week or so ago, two weeks ago, and everybody just pulled out the positive parts of that speech and markets have rallied. So look, I'm not saying it shouldn't rally. I'm just trying to um, do this in, in stages, right? In other words, I, no one's... I, I hope no one's calling the bottom here. I don't know if the bottom is in. I wish I did. I would tell you for sure, uh, but I don't. And I think you got to kind of follow the trends here. So a few things, speaking of trends, we're going to look at um, oil. Uh, I wrote an article today on our Chicken Power Feed. That's chickenpowerfeed.com. You should check it out. It's a free uh, Monday through Friday newsletter. I write to my other colleagues and even our founder, Mark Chaikin, has a good amount of writings out there um, in the archive. So it's 100% it's free. Just put your email in, you'll start getting the emails and um, you know, you'll see the daily notes. And today I just kind of wrote about the oil market where it's kind of changing trend, um, you know, looking at a pullback in uh, the commodity and maybe how it's gonna affect the industry. So we'll look at XLE, we'll look at a few industries today. And one other thing I'm gonna look at is uh, a few of the selections that are gonna be moving into the NASDAQ 100 on December 19th. So a week from today, uh, on the 19th, you're going to see some new names in there. And one name I just couldn't disagree with more. Um, and it's not just me. The power gauge is also disagreeing with it. And uh, so are the technicals. So let's dive into that name and uh, just kind of show you uh, what we're seeing on those charts. Okay, let's dive in and see what we see on the charts. All right, everybody, we're here at the ACP platform on stock charts. And I'm just looking at the XLA. And we talked about, um, you know, an article I wrote today and here it is. Uh, it's chickenpowerfeed.com. You can go to that area and just get power feed here and you sign up. It's 100% free Monday through Friday. And I was just talking about, um, you know, our best performing sector, which is the energy sector, XLE. But looking at the commodity, how it's breaking down and, you know, trying to either project, definitely not predict, but certainly project um, something to see if this is, you know, just signaling just lower lows here in the commodity, will that trickle over into the industry group and specifically some of the bigger names in there could, but we do have one thing here. The white house publicly stated that we'll start to repurchase uh, for our country's SPR, the strategic petroleum reserve uh, between the prices of 67 and 72. Is that a put? I, I assume it is. Um, I don't know that for sure, but what I'm looking at, is XLE kind of just rolling over a little bit, you know, struggle with that high. It is a higher high here on the peak. Um, and we did get a higher low as well. But, you know, I think we're at support right here, right around these prices. And, you know, when I go in and look at our uh, rating, we rate, when we rate this by rating, um, we're at a neutral plus here on the XLE. So you look at that and then we rank them by power bar. 
And you can see right here, I've got, uh, that's XLI, hold on. XLE is, no, even further down, wow. So it has been downgraded, um, moved from number seven to number 12, um, and pretty much underperformed the S&P last week. So, you know, I, I call that out just to say that, again, this is our process. Um, this is something that we, you know, watch and try to look at and look for signs of uh, trend changes. And, you know, what we're, we are seeing here is a zero number of bullish names, um, 11 bears and 12 neutral. So kind of in the neutral area, the trend just weakened and your money flow and relative strength is breaking down just ever so slightly. It's done it before, okay? It did it here back between, uh, you know, June and September and then broke out again. And obviously it even did it uh, parts of last year and coming into uh, the end of the year last year. And then it took, you know, just skyrocketed up. So it's up about, you know, 40 some odd percent this year, but it's just something you got to pay attention to. I, I don't want to get, be, you know, be blindsided on this. Um, just some other sectors. XLF is certainly um, looking better, but even on the ratio chart that kind of rolled over a little bit, banks just stumbled um, in the last week or two, you know, just on sentiment and a, a few other things. Now looking at industrials and materials, you know, they look strong. Um, I like the ratio charts as well on these. They look excellent. Um, materials, this is the industrial area. That's looking excellent too. And, you know, obviously a weaker oil price, you know, could help, you know, these uh, specific sectors. When you're talking about transportation and, you know, exploration and, and production of what they do, um, a cheaper commodity helps. Uh, XLB, Kind of wavering a little bit, not in a great shape, but really overall, I still like it. I think it's an interesting part of the market. And if I look at tech, I know everybody likes to look at tech here. Um, I don't see anything great here. I just see another downtrend that's continuing and um, something that I think you got to be careful of. So let's look at the crude uh, chart here. And let me see, I have two charts here. Hold on. I got the other one saved here. So I, I wrote this blue... Uh, created this blue area, this blue box area, and I called it um, the White House buy zone. And uh, I don't know if that's going to come into effect, but boy, did, didn't oil find its way there pretty quickly uh, after that announcement? It's pretty interesting. You know, it coincides with some other areas prior to the big run up to about 130 a barrel or so. Um, these were areas, zones that I was watching between, um, you know, this uh, 60 and $80 price. Uh, this 75 was an interesting spot where it broke out, but now we're kind of breaking down below that. And I drew this really bad head and shoulders here, uh, but it is uh, nonetheless a pattern that I had to squint to see, but I tried to build it as best I could. Um, so that's kind of what I'm seeing on oil. I, you know, it's not a great situation. You know, I talked about this last week, um, NDX, and I even wrote an article about it in that Chicken Power Feed. Again, go to Chicken Power Feed. You can check out the archives as well. Uh, in there. And I, I, I can concern myself with the ratio chart here more than the actual index chart. Now, we had a couple moving average crossing uh, to the downside here uh, as well, you know, and you're seeing that's the 100 crossing under, um, I'm sorry, the 55 crossing under the 100. And that 55 is getting close to the 200. But here on the ratio, that already crossed. And what I wrote about was that, you know, you're seeing, um, you're seeing uh, this pattern play out. We haven't seen this in a very long time. Now, the 50 crossed the 200 a couple times over the last 20 years, right? But overall, the index was in an uptrend when that was happening. So it wasn't really bad. Back here in 2001, I know you can hardly see this, but that's about August of 2001. That's the last time it crossed after a massive run-up. I'm just calling it out there. I don't know if it means anything in particular, but... Um, I thought I should talk about it either way. Okay, um, last thing I want to talk about is a few names that are going to be added to the NASDAQ uh, 100 next week, again, December 19th. And, you know, here's an interesting name, uh, CoStar Group Professional Services, you know, strong stock and a strong group, uh, had a relative strength change. We're, we like the name. It's a, we're bullish on it. It's an interesting setup here. Um, and I don't terribly disagree with it, but, you know, I do have to question the valuation here. Um, when you're looking at a $2 billion revenue stock with a $32 billion market cap and a 93 PE, I'm just kind of trying to figure out what, you know, what the committee might've been seeing here. Um, so it's a, a very uh, low uh, return on equity 
And again, from an industry standpoint, these might be good metrics, but from our metric standpoint, when we look at financials, um, not a lot of debt, that's great, but the cash flow, price to sales, price to book, return on equity, all very weak. Uh, I know we have a bullish rating on this, but from a fundamental and a, you know, more of a value standpoint, I don't see it. Um, you know, that's, that's just me being pretty critical, but we've got the power gauge and that's kind of been leading us um, for many, many years and we're going to rely on it. Um, and I look at uh, global foundries. Now, semiconductors in general have been doing great. Um, when you start to think about, you know, the, the picks and shovels aspect of this, again, an interesting setup, really like the chart, um, relatively new. Don't forget, this is a new um, IPO company within the past year. We just started putting a rating on it and it just turned bullish. Now it's a relative strength buy. That's just a signal that met some criteria here. We're not out there touting this as something to go run and get into. Uh, you can't argue though with the technical. So it's interesting. The one that I couldn't disagree with um, anymore is, uh, is Rivian. Now this is an interesting setup, but um, that all of it to me looks negative. And even on the power gauge, we are rating this bearish, uh, but you're looking at a stock that has about a billion dollars in revenue, uh, produces less than 15,000 vehicles per year. As a matter of fact, I think they're on track year to date so far, about 12,000 or so. Maybe they can get above that. I don't know exactly. Uh, but I do um, want to point out a few things. They did have a recall this year of about 13,000 vehicles. That's about what they're, they've already produced this year. Now, I don't know what years they were or exactly what the issue was. Uh, one of it was a fastener, and I believe it had to do with the wheels, um, certainly an important part of any vehicle. Uh, but if I look at earnings per share, losing six and almost $7 a share and estimates are out there of about a $5 billion loss so far, 1.7 billion of that in the third quarter. I'm just trying to, I'm scratching my head here trying to figure out, you know, what the criteria was, you know, to add this. Now I know that there's a methodology behind it and I know it probably checked a lot of boxes. I know it's an, an electric vehicle name and maybe there's, um, you know, the, an ESG component to this. I don't know for sure, but I'm telling you, uh, I wouldn't be using this investment committee's addition uh, as investment advice. I'm sure they would say the same thing, but in this name, Rivian, it doesn't look great at all. A few other names uh, out there, Baker Hughes, um, obviously in a downtrend, the stock's been back and forth. Um, we're very bearish on the name. Our power gauge rating couldn't be more bearish um, because it's already very bearish and uh, looking at Warner Brothers uh, Entertainment. So I've got three or four names here. Um, I just use Tesla here. The Tesla is already in there, uh, but that's not an addition. Let me just get rid of that real quick. But these three names, Rivian, uh, BKR, and WBD uh, are all negative and they're additions. Okay. These are new stocks. So be careful. Um, don't use that as investment advice. Um, again, I'm not exactly sure of the full criteria, but if I do a health check on these names that I found are being added. And again, I might not have every name in there, but this is the name names that I saw. Um, I don't see a lot to like there. Um, just one bullish name, uh, two bullish names, both with high valuations. Um, something I would just be aware of. Okay, everybody, that's all we have for today. And just to verify, I went back and checked those names. Those are the names that are being added. And again, I wanted to review a few of them because not all of them look great, but certainly some of them, um, I'm not exactly sure how they're making it into the index. But again, um, that's what we're seeing here at Chaken. Thanks again for tuning in. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.